Welcome to Interparty Conflict, the podcast where we answer your questions so you can have the best tabletop gaming experience possible. Now, this is actually not a normal episode. This is going to be a short little bonus episode for you guys. But my name is Gabe, and I'm here with three special guests, three friends of mine that were visiting in in town. They stayed with us for Thanksgiving. And I thought, uh, why not bring them on the podcast and and, uh, see how they're doing? So the first one we have up today is Brandon. Hello, everyone. So, Brandon, uh, you have submitted some questions to us in the past. I have. Correct? Under the yeah. name Brandon Dorf. Uh-huh. I think we have one that's probably going to go out in one of the next couple of Oh, that's my Reddit well. name. Now the whole world knows. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, so welcome to welcome to the podcast. I, I hope you had a good Thanksgiving, a good time staying here. I did. Um, we had a whole bunch of turkey. I ate more than I thought was physically possible for me. So. <laughs> well, good. All right. Uh, so what I'm going to do, listeners, I'm just going to basically uh, have the these three friends. The other two are JT and Haley, but we'll get to them in just a moment. Um, I'm basically just going to, you know, interview each of them for a few minutes and talk about uh, D&D and other tabletop games. So, Brandon, first off, how did you get into D&D or other tabletop games? Well, um, I've only played the one. I've played D&D. Um, I got into it a little bit after I started college. Um Haley, who's actually sitting behind me, uh, got me into it. And um, that's actually how I met JT. So I think this was about, was it about two years back? And uh, I've been playing ever since. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Um, do you have a favorite gaming memory? Just like one thing that sticks out in your mind? Yes, actually. This was uh, a little bit recent. Um, I think this was two sessions ago. We do a bi-weekly uh, session. Okay. And um, my character is not like the most honest guy or the very trustworthy kind of guy sure sure so what had happened was basically everyone at the table was essentially interrogating this very skeevy guy and um it was just a mess but i loved it because i like creating trouble so sure sure okay um do you have do you have a least favorite gaming memory that sticks out in, in your mind um i think my least favorite was when um I joined this campaign with uh, some project group members that I had. Mm -hmm. It was a very short-lived one. It was for the Curse of Strahd campaign. Sure, yeah. I've I've heard a lot of people uh, play that. Um, I think I would have enjoyed it if it weren't for, um, I'm not going to use any names, but the host (laughs) was, uh, he was very hardcore metagaming and he was like, you know, um, know, for next session we need to make sure we strategize all this, this, and this. And he would look at the campaign notes and kind of... um, take the numbers from there and just kind of, and that, that just really wasn't kind of my play style. Sure. Um, I preferred to kind of just do things as they came. So I kind of got out of there after a few weeks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes when you're in a group that you don't quite, it just doesn't quite fit what you want from it. You know, right. you just gotta, just gotta get out of there and find something you do want. Right. Uh, okay. And is there anything that you are excited for in the future? This could be something that you want to do with a character you're currently playing. It could be a character that you want to make and play in a future campaign. It could also be something that you hope that Wizards of the Coast or somebody comes out with in a future book. Um, I am really excited for uh, Xanathar's Guide. I okay. um, actually did get a few peeks at some of the pages, but I'm most excited for... Um, the death of my character, actually. Oh, okay. I, I love playing as him. He's a great character, but yeah. most of my fun comes from, I guess, creating and then role playing as different characters. Sure. Um, though, you know, I still ro- love role playing my current character. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a part of me that still can't wait for the day that he goes. Yeah. So yeah. that uh, I can just get a new one rolling and see what they're all about. Yeah. Yeah. Making new characters is always really fun. Oh, yeah. um, have you listened to D&D Character Lab? Uh, yes, I did. I actually listened to, I think they're two most recent ones. Mm-hmm. Um, I forgot what they were doing, but uh, I was on a road, tr- not a road trip, but it was just a short drive. And um, I love what they do. It's so yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because, cause, you know, making characters is so much fun. It's, yeah. it's cool to find a podcast that's all about making characters. Yeah, and but... I like the attributes they use, too. Like, yeah, they the, make the you categories and yeah. everything, yeah. kind of want to do that with somebody sometime. Yeah. Um, okay, anything else that you want to talk about D&D-wise? Um, I do have a message for my uh, my lovely DM, David. <laughs> if you're listening, I love you. Bye. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. All right. Well, just be sure to uh, to suggest this to him, or maybe uh, suggest it to someone else while he's in the room. Oh, he, well, he's a listener. So oh, he is. Yeah, okay. He is. Awesome. Yeah. It's always always uh, always cool to hear that. 
All right, and our second guest up here is JT. Hello. JT, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you, Gabe? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I am I got up a little early today because uh, today was our, our little town's uh, Thanksgiving parade, which was, it started out warmer than I was expecting and ended up a lot colder than it I was expecting. really cold all of a sudden. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I, I'm going to work in a couple hours, so I figured I would hang out with you guys and, and do something fun. Glad to be here. Cool. Um, so, same questions. First one, how did you first get into D&D or tabletop gaming? I first got into it with uh, my brother and his friends. They were playing um, the Firefly RPG. How is that? It's different. Okay. Um, it rewards your creative thinking in a way is where uh, you get inspiration points. Yeah. And uh, uh, like inspiration points, but it's like if you do something just really cool, really fun – the players around the table will reward you. They'll just hand you a coin and be like, oh. here, here, that was amazing. Thanks. That's really cool. Cause I, you know, I, I really liked Firefly uh, maybe about 10 years ago. I was, I was really into it as were all my friends mm-hmm. and I knew there was an RPG or at least one. I think there might've been a couple of them, but I, uh, I never played it. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I, I just, now I, I, I'm not as, as crazy about the show as I used to be. So, right. It's, it's not, it's, I think it's like the fate system. Oh, Okay. If I'm remembering it correctly, but that was when I first got into it. And then we segued into the Star Wars RPG, and then mm-hmm. I eventually ended up with uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Gotcha. I've played the um, I've, well, I've played Star Wars D20 a bit. I believe, I believe that's the one we played. Like, yeah, a long time ago. I played maybe like three or four sessions of it, and it it just wasn't really for me. I mean, the system was fine, but like everybody else in the group was crazy about Star Wars. They knew everything about Star <laughs> Wars, and so I. I just was not able to participate nearly as much as everybody else was. Right, right. So, and also it was, it was all it was all new people. You know, I only knew one of the people in the group like tangentially, and so I don't know. Made wrong time, I guess, for uh, for me. Um, so, uh, and then did you get into D and D? So you got into D and D after Star Wars? Mm-hmm. Okay, I did. Uh, do you have a favorite gaming memory that comes to mind? I do. One of my favorite memories was um, I'm actually finishing up this campaign with that same group that my brother and I. Are in. We were, um, I created this half orc character and I couldn't think of a name. And I saw this bunny gif of him chewing something and it said om nom. <laughs> so I made him my character. Yeah. And my favorite moment was he has no charisma, no intelligence. And the DM was like, okay, you have two things right next to you a jar and a potion bottle. And I was like, ooh, I drink the potion bottle. And he goes, for once in your life, you feel very smart. Yeah. And it like temporarily boosted my intelligence score to like, a normal number and it was fun to interact because I no longer could be like, okay, how can I not think smart? Like I got to have a below average intelligence. How can I not know things? So it was really fun to finally enjoy that with the character. Yeah. Yeah. It's always intelligence is a really hard. It's probably one of the hardest stats to role play because you either have to make, you either have to play your character like they are a player. You either have to play a character that is smarter than you are or play a character that is dumber than you are. And so it's, uh, y- you always have to like, I don't know. It's it's like you ha- you have to do extra work to figure mm-hmm. out how your character would react to things. Mm. Um, I've, I've had a lot of people, I've seen a lot of people ask on like Facebook and such how you should deal with if there's a low intelligence character in the party and you're like the party's trying to figure out a puzzle or something, should that character just like not participate? And in that kind of case, I always say that let the players participate. Don't penalize the player for the stats their character has. But I think the character, the player should try to figure out a way, a clever way for their character to figure out something if their character wouldn't normally be that intelligent. Right. Like uh, my DM guy, he he and I spoke later because I was like, man, this is getting hard, like pretending to not know things. And he's like, well, you know, he's like. You can ask questions. You can talk. He's just like, just don't like be afraid if you speak up. And I realize, think about it. And he's like, well, really wouldn't figure that out. And he's like, I make, might make you take like physical damage and have a nosebleed because it was like, <laughs> ah, yeah, you thought too hard. Sure, sure. And so it's it's fun. But I've also found with um, being not so smart of an intelligence of a character, it, you can get away with a lot. Okay. <laughs> like you can do something and you if you can explain your thought process of how you got there. Most times you can make people face palm and go, oh, I can totally see that happen. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. Um, do you have a least favorite gaming memory that comes to mind? Oh, man. Um, same group of people for the least favorite memory. It was my 
it was actually my first participation in a party wipe. Okay. And I was, at the time, I was working a job that went later, so I showed up later to the sessions. As I walk in through the door, everyone looks at me and goes, JT, you're our last hope. You have to kill this dragon. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no. Uh, and it was an acid dragon. And, and it, it was my least favorite memory for two reasons. Yeah. First was um, I failed the roll. Oh. And so I missed and our DM just folds up his book and goes, everyone died because <laughs> you don't stand a chance. And I was like, oh, okay. And the second reason it was my least favorite is because I found out afterwards. I was like, how much health did that dragon have left? And he goes, JT, he had four hit points left. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> And I was like, are you serious? <laughs> I had one. Um, the first campaign I ever played in, I feel like I might have even mentioned this on the podcast before. I'm not sure. But we were we had a we had a, a fight during this campaign where we were up against a black dragon. Oh, and man. it first thing it did was it cast darkness on itself. This was third edition. So it was like a it basically created a giant sphere of darkness that nobody could see through. Ugh. And so the whole fight, we were still able to attack it because, you know, it's in combat. You can make listen checks or whatever to to tell what square it's in but because we were effectively blind to it every attack had a 50 percent mischance as 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 was the case in third edition and um it got to a point where we had we were all almost dead but the dragon had taken enough damage that the dragon flew away so the dragon started flying away the party fighter as this thing it was the party fighter was the only person that could reach it it was like at the maximum range of his bow he fired his bow at the dragon, you know, just shooting at the center of this f this floating sphere of darkness that's flying away. He rolled a natural 20. Nice. But then failed the mischance. No. So he missed. And we found out later it had one hit point left. Oh, that's the word. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Similar, oh. <laughs> similar thing. I feel for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, what's something that you are excited for in the future? Something with your character, a character you want to play, or something, maybe like a new mechanic or something that you hope might come out in the future? I'm really excited for the um, the current campaign we're in. Uh, we're playing a massive world, and I'm excited to see my character uh, interact with another character in our group. I'm a chaotic neutral barbarian, and mm -hmm. I have, um, I believe it's Black Razor from the fifth edition. Oh, okay, yeah. So we've got him. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I don't mind. Like, I'll, I'll stab somebody and kill them. Be like, yeah, give me the bonus stuff. Let's go. Got to feed you. And um, we have a paladin. Oh. That's lawful good. And he's on to me already. Yeah. So it's like, uh-oh, this is going to be good. And I have a wish spell, like, stored up because we found the deck of many things, and I pulled the card that gave me a wish. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I, I don't want to use this, so I'm really looking forward to see just it all pan out. Yeah. It just go where it goes, <laughs> and I expect mayhem to happen, and it's just being with fun people and a fun story, so I'm excited. Cool. I'm sorry. I I, I sort of sighed at the, the mention of the deck of many things. I'm not a fan of, the, of <laughs> that artifact. It we, we we lucked out in our group. We we I think we drew, like, four of the best cards all right there as we were going, as we passed it around for a bunch of us. So we, we experienced insane luck. Our DM was just in disbelief at the amount of luck we've all been having. And then yeah. one character drew, like, I think one of the worst cards that, like, imprisoned his soul. And he just <laughs> died on in the spot. And we were like, oh, things can happen. He's like, I warned you. Bad things happen in this deck. You don't understand. Right, right. So we're like, oh, leave it alone. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, cool. Um, anything else that comes to mind you want to talk about D&D? Man, I love that D&D allows so much flexibility for the players and dungeon masters in playing. I find it to be a very rewarding game if you can just have an idea and you just discuss things. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, I, I definitely agree. The The first ever time that I played, it wasn't D&D, but it was the uh, first time I played any role-playing game ever. It was a game that my brother actually helped create. Um it was he described it to, my brother described it to me as like it's like a a computer game but without the computer. And at the time, I was like, well, what in the world does that mean? And then when I actually played it, I realized, oh, that's what it means. And it's so cool. Like, it's, yeah. anything that you want to do is technically possible. It's just a matter of how likely you are to succeed. Yeah, it's really neat. Like, I, I haven't played a game where you're rewarded both for your consistency in staying as one thing or if you just branch off and do another, mm -hmm. like, whatever. Like, you can multi-class. I haven't played many games where... Either way is equally as rewarding. It's just how rewarding do you find it? Most games, you, you'll if you branch off, it tends to be like, oh, you're you're almost penalized in some yeah. weird form or fashion, and be like, oh, I, oh, I just messed up my entire game. Whoops. Yeah, I've never been a fan of. I've never multi-classed 
very much myself. But I mean, from what I hear, lots of other people do it, especially in 5th edition, and they have great results. But personally, I'd rather just stick with one class and get everything that that class right. is, is capable of. <laughs> All right. And our uh, third guest here is Haley. Welcome, Haley. Hello. <laughs> and you and I, um, the, JT and Brandon, uh, I, I had never met either of you in person until just a few days ago. But Haley, we uh, we met several years ago in Tennessee, correct? Yep, yep. Yeah. I don't know why I'm asking you if that's correct. Of course, that's correct. <laughs> uh, so how are you doing today? Good. How are you? I'm pretty good. As I said, I had to get up a little early, so I'm a little a little tired. Yeah. But uh, I've got, after, I have one work, one day at work today, and then I have got three days off. So That is awesome. Yeah. Um, so, how did you first get into D and D or tabletop gaming? Well, it was actually the first time I ever played was with you in yeah. Tennessee. Uh, <laughs> I'm guessing maybe six or seven years ago. Yeah, it was the um, the when it was a fifth edition D and D play test, the very first one oh, back when it was called D and D Next. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, neither did I, because fifth edition or D and D Next, it you know it it was it was new you know it was the first play test of it and i i don't know it was it was it was like so trimmed down compared to third or fourth edition yeah. and i don't know i feel like i didn't do a great job running whatever i did run for that well i didn't know the difference so <laughs> i guess <laughs> uh, okay and uh, and then so after after that did you play much D D after that or um i didn't until i moved back to georgia mm -hmm. and then met jt and well not actually met. We met in middle school, but we got back together. <laughs> sure, um, sure. And he well, always went and played D&D. &D, and I was like, hey, I want to play because I was jealous. And <laughs> he ended up starting his own campaign. Um, mm. And so we played that together. And then we played with our current DM, David. Hi, mm -hmm. David. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's kind of how that happened. Okay, cool. <clears throat> uh, what is your favorite gaming memory? There's so many. Yeah, well, I mean, you can you can share a couple if you <laughs> okay. want. Okay. Um, one of the funniest ones to me was when uh, I had to miss a session, and everybody else got in this big kerfuffle with um, a bunch of thieves. Okay. And so they were they stopped in the middle of the fight because they were all kind of about to die. Sure. And so when the next session started, my character just kind of rounded the corner in town and saw them all. <laughs> and I happened to have this fire breathing potion. Okay. And that was the only way that I was going to be able to help them because they were on in dire straits pretty sure, much. Sure. So I just walked around the corner all nonchalant and then just blasted them with <laughs> massive <laughs> fire balls and uh and pretty much destroyed them all <laughs> that cool. was funny <laughs> oh, that's, that's cool it's always always neat when uh you know everybody's in trouble and you're able to to just solve it with one thing yeah okay uh do you have a least favorite gaming memory that comes to mind um i don't know maybe I mean, if, if not that's fine in the beginning it was a little hard because like i said i didn't know what i was doing so it was very stressful <laughs> yeah yeah uh but once i I learned and I actually realized, oh, I can read the rules in the book. That's what this is for. <laughs> then, yeah. Then it made more sense. Yeah. I remember when I did first start playing, the guy who taught me how to play the game saw me at school one day in high school. He saw me at school and I had a player's handbook with me and he got really proud because like I was, he saw that I was excited enough about the game to be reading the rules on my own time. Yeah. So that's always a, a nice thing for a DM to see that a player is, is interested in doing that. Right. Um, is there anything that you're excited for in the future? Well, I like seeing all the changes, you know, they, they always bring out new books and there's new monsters and new classes and all that stuff. So yeah. that's cool. But also, um, our DM has kind of been upping the ante slowly over time. <laughs> okay. So he started out, um, maybe when we would get a potion or something, then he would actually hand us a bottle with something in it and we yeah. have to actually drink it when we want to use the potion. And then we got some maps, and he handed us maps that were, like, burned on the edges and looked all cool. So <laughs> on that personal level, I'm yeah. excited to see what he does next. <laughs> yeah, I I personally love I love giving handouts. Mm -hmm. I also love getting handouts. Yeah. Like, anything physical in a campaign, I think, is just so awesome. Yeah, it makes it feel more real. Yeah. For, my, um, for the 5th edition campaign I ran shortly after 5th edition came out, 
I the first session I was going to have the players all meet up at this tavern, and so I made flyers for that tavern. <laughs> I didn't I didn't go like all out or anything, but I um, I bought this paper that like the background was sort of like a, sort of like a splotchy brown and white mm-hmm. color. Um, there's probably it's look kind of like marble or something. Oh, okay. And um, so I got that and then I printed out these flyers and I had like different ones. So there'd be like a couple different variations of this flyer. And so I gave them out to the players and um, I don't know. I, I love stuff like that. I think that's so cool when DMs will like yeah. burn the burn the edges yeah. of stuff. <laughs> and I do downstairs in my basement, I do have a bunch of little glass bottles mm-hmm. that I'm hoping to someday do something with like those potions. Yeah. There's a back when... Um, Wizards of the Coast was producing a Dungeon Magazine. There were dun- there's Dungeon Magazine and Dragon Magazine. Dragon Magazine was more like character options and stuff for the players. Dungeon Magazine was like full of adventures that for the for the DM to run. And there was a series of adventures that they came out with that were called the Challenge of Champions. And it was it was basically a bunch of like puzzles. And all of them it, the idea was that you were supposed to have the same challenge whether you were first level or 20th level. So like it was it was it was all Role playing based stuff, some skill based stuff, but it was mostly like puzzles the players have to figure out. Mm -hmm. And I ran a couple of those and I loved them because I could go all out with the props. (laughs) I think I've mentioned this on a previous episode, but there was one time one of the puzzles was that the players had to get there was like a a ledge they had to get to that was really high up. But in order to get up there, they had there was a pair of boots of levitation. (laughs) However, they had gotten mixed up with a bunch of other identical boots. (laughs) So as the DM, what I was supposed to do was I, I had a whole bunch of paper bags, like paper grocery bags that were all numbered or lettered or something. And then the players had to try them all on, try on every combination <laughs> and say this command word and then keep trying different. So the players had to be physically putting on that's these hilarious. these paper bags on their feet. And that's that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, so I love I love physical props. I love giving my players handouts. That's that's definitely a thing that I love doing. Yeah, it's the best. <laughs> yes. Okay, and JT, you uh, you wanted to say something else? I did. Uh, David, when you hear this, I want you to know, because I realized I was the only one who didn't say anything about you. So. <laughs> love you, buddy. And uh, thanks for running an awesome campaign. We, uh, we love what you do, man. All right. <laughs> okay, well, um, I guess that'll probably do it. So thank you, everybody, for uh, for listening. Thank you, three, for coming on and, uh, oh, thanks for and doing this. Thanks. Hope you guys had a good time. Hope you guys had a good Thanksgiving. Oh, and, yeah. Awesome. Um, Best turkey. Well, I, I, I made the turkey, and I, I feel like it was not my best. So. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Uh, so yeah, thank once again, thank you guys, and um, I guess, I guess that'll do it. All you listeners out there, have a, have a happy after Thanksgiving. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we have, sorry, one more little story from yeah. Brandon here. So um, I was just mentioning Richard. Um, he was actually a, he was, I use past tense because he's no longer with us. Um, but <laughs> Richard was this flesh golem. Um, we were playing the white plume dungeon. Okay. Um, and in there, there's a riddle that you have to answer from uh, basically this giant mass of flesh golems. And uh, ah. yeah, it's disgusting. It's horrific. <laughs> Uh, they had their mouths stitched up, and they were just made up of different parts. Um, it was grotesque. But yeah. basically, we got the riddle right. Um, a fellow player and I both got it right. So we, <laughs> what we did was um, we got split custody of uh, <laughs> the flesh golem that we were rewarded okay. as uh, you know for answering the riddle correctly. Um, and my character is just like, oh, we're gonna name him Richard, whatever. So we named him Richard. Um, and he was essentially our Swiss Army man. Um, I don't know if you've seen that film. Have you seen I have it? not. Oh, it's a great film. Um, definitely watch it. You can power your jet ski with farts later on. Anyways. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Richard was essentially our check for traps, our, you know, get advantage on crossing spike-filled pits because he'll just carry you across, <laughs> basically. Sure. Um, so we would send him down, like, you know, in dungeons, every hallway that you have to turn into becomes kind of like 
the worst possible situation ever in your head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we would say we taught him because his mouth was also stitched up for all we knew. He, he, well, flesh golems are constructs. Right, right. Um, so he couldn't technically speak because his mouth was sewn up and we weren't the actual creators of him. So we taught him to raise his hand if he went down the hallway and saw something that was potentially dangerous to us. Okay. So he would go down, turn, and if he didn't raise his hand, we were like, okay, it's safe to go. Everybody go, go, go. <laughs> um, and we kept doing this all throughout the campaign. There was this part where, um, you know, if we didn't cross properly, we all got super tetanus. Um, <laughs> it was crazy, but I loved it. Um, he, he essentially sat in the center of the pit because he was immune to – Essentially, all sources of damage, piercing, slashing, bludgeoning. He okay. uh, like straight up immune to it. Um, the only thing that could hurt him was fire, I believe. Sure. And he would sit in the middle of the pit, and we would base. He would raise both of his hands, and we would step onto each of his hands like uh, sure, stepping stones. Sure, sure, yeah. And it was just amazing. We eventually <laughs> lost him. A very dramatic scene. We the the dungeon was basically crumbling down upon us. Um, well, no, I think we were facing two gins. Were they gins? Yeah. Yes. Two gins. And we were trying to run. Or no, we killed them and then the dungeon was falling apart and we were trying to run they away. Were yeah, yeah, yeah. That was it. They were respawning. So they were chasing after us and we were like deathly low. So we had to get out of there. Yeah. And Richard, since he belonged to this dungeon, he couldn't escape. And by this time, we were all very emotionally attached to Richard. Um, <laughs> of course. He was our mascot, he was our baby. Um, Especially Abel's, that's my character. Um, so they kind of had this emotional moment where, like, they're both trying to run through the steps. And as Richard kind of reaches through, his hand starts to dissolve away back oh, into the no. dungeon. So there's this heart wrenching moment. And as Abel's being, like, pulled away, like, told to, like, just let him go, you know, it's just, and it was heartbreaking. Is, like, yeah. He, he was, yeah. 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 He was <laughs> just standing there with his hand raised, telling us that danger was right near. Oh. And, uh, I think the doors to the dungeon finally shut after that. So very heartbreaking. Justice yeah. For yep. Okay. Hashtag justice for Richard. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Well, well, um, uh, we can, we can raise a glass in memory of Richard the flash yes. golem. Um, <laughs> <click>. exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I just had to get the Taylor Richard out there because I could not forget him. All right. Well, yeah. We will, because of this podcast, he will be immortalized in the memories yes, of excellent. our hundred listeners or whatever. Yeah. I just realized that was perfect for the uh, the funeral pyre. Yeah. Well, then that'll be an impromptu funeral pyre yeah. for this. Right on. Or if you want to, I can cut this out and put it into another episode or something on that. Um, either or. I you're the you're the podcast man, so I think you know best. <laughs> sure. 